Today, building owners across the world are looking for ways to minimize their environmental impact. As a result, interest in LEED certification continues to grow. LEED, or Leadership in Energy and Environmental Design, is a third-party independent certification developed by the U.S. Green Building Council, used to recognize building design and operations that achieve high performance in key areas of human and environmental health. If you're seeking LEED certification for your building, you may be surprised to learn that you can earn two LEED credits by reducing the environmental impact of your pest management program. In order to earn LEED certification, a building must accumulate credits based on how it is constructed and operated. Building owners and property managers looking to earn credit for their pest control program must implement and maintain an integrated pest management program. Integrated Pest Management, or IPM, is an environmentally friendly, sustainable approach to pest management. The U.S. Green Building Council endorses IPM as a strategy to control pests and to gain credits through LEED, you've got to use IPM. There are four components of an integrated pest management program, biological control, physical control, cultural control, and chemical control. And let me provide some examples. In reference to biological control, using a biological agent like a bacteria in a drain will help eat the gook that's there and therefore reduce the amount of fly problems there. In reference to physical control, using things to prevent pests from getting in, like screens or air curtains or even a door sweep would be very effective. Cultural control is actually doing things that will change our behavior, such as taking the garbage out more often or moving the dumpster away from a building. As a last resort, chemical control will be utilized to make sure that the pest population is kept under control. There are three key requirements that your IPM program must meet in order to be lead worthy. Number one, your program must include limited use of chemical pesticides. This means that you can only use pesticides as a last resort. What that means is using some of those previous methods of monitoring and exclusion and trapping before you have to use chemicals. Then, of course, making sure when you do, they're targeted and specific to the situation, always utilizing a pest professional to help you with that. And then also, there are some chemicals that are more toxic than others. Always select the least toxic product to make sure you can get the pests under control. Number two, when chemical applications are made, your program must outline a communication plan for notifying building occupants. What we mean by that is, 72 hours prior to a pesticide application, occupants need to be notified. If it's an emergency use of pesticides, then you need to let them know at least 24 hours after the pesticide application. And number three, your program must clearly define what constitutes an emergency application of pesticides. This is really tricky because your situation may be very different from someone else's, or the pests that are actually there may be different, or the level that's acceptable. You need to sit down with your pest control professional and flesh that out. So in conclusion, we want to make sure that you get all of the credits you can for your IPM program through LEED. Following these three things that we've talked about will help that happen. If you're working toward LEED certification, you can use Orkin's IPM and LEED Certification Property Managers Checklist, available at orkin.com commercial in the Orkin University section. To learn more about the pest management protocols required to obtain LEED credit, visit usgbc.org.